How easy is it to maintain a reef tank like this? Well, today we're gonna to answer just that. I'll run you through my full maintenance schedule. I'll show you what I do daily, weekly, and monthly to keep this tank looking as good as it does. Let's go. We'll start off with the most basic task and that is feeding the fish. I feed my fish twice a day, once in the morning before work and again when I come home from work. I try to give my fish a good variety of food so I switch between frozen food and pellet food. More often than not, I'll feed frozen in the morning and pellet in the evening. The fish I've chosen aren't that fussy and generally they'll eat anything that I chuck in the tank. Every other day I'll clean the algae off the glass. It's not necessary to do it so often, but I do like nice clean panels to look through at my corals. If I've had a busy work week, then I'll leave it until the weekend, but more often than not, I'll do it every other day. It's only a five minute job, and if you don't leave it too long, all it takes is one pass with the algae scraper and it's looking fresh again. Now the weekends are where I do the bulk of my maintenance. I don't spend a huge amount of time, only about an hour or so. The first thing I do is check the sump. I make sure the GHL probes are nice and clean, if they're looking a little bit grubby, I'll pull them out and I'll give them a gentle brush with a toothbrush. Next, I'll check the dosing lines. I'll give them a quick visual check just to make sure they're not clogged. Also, I'll make sure the KH director and the iron director lines are still submerged. And I'll give the auto top off sensor a quick visual check just to make sure it's not dirty and it is still functioning correctly. Whilst I'm in the sump, I'll empty the skimmer collection cup and give it a good clean. I skim quite aggressively, so this cup is usually brimming after about a week. I've got a fair few fish in the tank and I feed quite heavily, hence the aggressive skim. I don't use any cleaning products when cleaning the skimmer cup, all I use is warm water and a bottle brush just to remove the bulk of the waste. I only use this brush on the skimmer and I definitely wouldn't recommend using something that isn't specifically used solely for this purpose. Next up, I'll refill the auto top off reservoir. I have my ATO reservoir underneath the TV stand at the left side of my tank. It's not in an ideal position, but it works well for hiding it. Prior to putting it in this position, I had a 25 litre barrel at the side of the tank. I really didn't like the look of it, so I moved the barrel under here instead. It's a bit of a pain filling it up, but it only takes five minutes. So I fill a 25 litre barrel with RO water. I'll take it over to the reservoir and I'll siphon the fresh RO in. The next tank I set up, I'll come up with something that makes my life a little bit easier, but this works for now. Then I move on to the display. Although I clean the algae off the glass every other day, at the weekends, I'll generally give it a much better scrape. I'll make sure to get into all of the edges that I missed throughout the week. Now it's important to be somewhat gentle when cleaning close to the silicon seal, especially if you're using something like the flipper cleaner. I go slowly back and forth next to the seal and I try not to actually make contact with it. It's probably overkill, but the last thing I wanna do is split a seam because I was too aggressive with the metal edge on the flipper. I also like to blow off any detritus from the rocks and out of all of the nooks and crannies. I use this extra long coral feeder to blow off any detritus from the rocks and off all of the corals. The coal tang and the two rasps also seem to bring a lot of sand up from the sand bed and scatter it across the rocks, so I like to blow that off too. It also gives me a good excuse to check out the tank from top down. Looking at the corals through the glass is awesome, but top down is on another level. Now I move on to cleaning the exterior of the glass. And this is a quick job that's made a little bit easier using a window back to speed up the process. I don't use any chemicals, I just add a little bit of distilled vinegar to a jug of RO water and wipe down the glass with a rag. I'll vacuum it off with the karcher and I'll give it a quick wipe down with a microfiber cloth and it's job done. Now the glass is spotless, I'll have a good look around. I'll spend about 10, 15 minutes just checking the health of the corals and also the fish. I also use this opportunity to check for any pests. I do have a big Aptasia problem in this tank that's getting a little bit out of control, but that's a story for another day. I do have a new gadget that should hopefully eliminate this issue, but I'll do a separate video on the reef to leak. The weekends are also when I do my water tests. I am currently using the GHL KH director and also the iron director, but I still religiously run a couple of manual tests. It's more out of habit than anything, but I'm a little bit old school. Whilst I do trust the results they produce, I still like to verify with manual tests. It doesn't take long as I use HANA checkers, but I check my alkalinity, phosphates, and nitrates once a week. If I'm in a bit of a rush, I will actually skip this step. I'm yet to have a result that massively differs from the GHL units, and so I will actually skip this step if I don't have time to do it. As for water changes, I now do them every other week. Water changes aren't actually necessary on the system as I'm dosing all the relevant elements to keep everything in check and also my filtration more than keeps up with nutrients. I actually went almost five months without doing a single water change on this tank so I know it's definitely possible to go without 
but I just feel like my tank looks a bit better when I do water changes. Polyp extension seems better, the corals look visually nicer and fluffier, and water clarity is better. There's just too many pros to outweigh the cons of water changes. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, and yes, it's not cheap to continue to do them when not completely necessary, but I think until I get a significantly bigger tank and the cost and time much outweigh the benefits, I'll just continue to do them. I've got a small mixing station that I have stored away until the point that I need it. It's a 20 gallon brute bin with a heater and max spec jump dryer that I keep in situ. The night before the water change, I'll pull it out from the cupboard that it's stored in. I'll pour in 50 liters of water. I'll add 2.1 kilos of aqua forest reef salt and I'll switch on the heater and pump and leave that mixing overnight. The next morning, I'll switch off the return pump and I'll siphon out 50 liters of water from the display tank. I then bring over the brute bin and I'll pump the freshly mixed salt water into the sump. I'll switch on the return pump and let the tank fill back up. I add the fresh salt water to the sump just in case there's any difference in temperature or salinity. As the sump is still full, it allows the fresh salt mix to mix with the existing water before it goes into the tank. It's probably overkill, but I try not to stress out my corals any more than I need to. Plus this way, I don't have to hold the hose when I'm filling the tank back up as I just wedge it in the clarity filter chamber. Once the water change is complete, I'll refill the dosing containers. The containers will actually last three weeks before I need to refill them, but doing it bi-weekly with the water change just saves a little bit of time. Now for the monthly maintenance. The first weekend of every month, I'll switch out the carbon. I don't run it in a reactor, I just have it in a bag. The chances of it being exhausted after just a month are quite slim, but if I change it at the same time every month, I always know when fresh carbon was added. I also clean the dryer once a month. I've got other wave makers in this tank, but I notice the biggest loss in flow if I don't clean out my dryer. The two CJ pumps at the back get cleaned every few months, but the dryer monthly without fail. Originally, when I set this tank up, I bought the Max Spec dryer double pack. I used to have one on each side of the tank, but after about six months, I decided it wasn't really working for me, and I removed one and added the two CJ pumps on the back glass. Since I bought two and I only use one, I have a complete set of spare parts for this pump. Instead of removing all of the parts, quickly cleaning them and putting them back on, I just switch out the spare parts from the old ones that I used to use. I remove it from the tank, I'll take it apart and replace the clean parts. I'll then soak the used parts in a jug of citric acid overnight and I'll give them a good scrub the next day. Then they'll go in a drawer until the next month and I'll repeat the process. To be honest, if I didn't have the spare parts for this pump, I probably wouldn't do this job as often as I do now. So that's it for the scheduled maintenance, but there are a few bits that I do as and when they need to be done. I change out the roll on the clarity every few months. On average, the roll lasts about every two to two and a half months. It's a bit of a faff to change the roll, but saying that I much prefer doing this every couple of months to changing out filter socks every couple of days. Water clarity is much better when running the clarity and it's a heck of a lot less maintenance than filter socks. CO2 absorbing media in the CO2 scrubber gets changed every two to three months. It's color changing media, so I'll wait for it all to turn purple before changing it out. And the last job I do is switch out the KH Director Reagent and the Ion Director Reference Solutions every so often, but I actually get a notification from the Proflux whenever that needs to be done. So I think that's about it. It might seem like a lot of work when you break it down like this, but other than the water changes, they're all just small five minute jobs. So that'll pretty much wrap it up for this week's video. If you've got any questions, drop them down in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed the video, drop it a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time, guys.